And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and today we're taking a look at Dice Throne. Dice Throne is a game in which you are going to be fighting other players. It's a player versus player. This one comes with six different players that will be going after each other. And in this game, you're going to be attacking each other with dice and cards. Mostly with dice. This game uh, utilizes the what I call the Yahtzee mechanism, where you'll be rolling dice, trying to get combos, using those combos to attack the other player and have them come back after you. It has some really stunning uh, components inside. But there are a lot of these player versus player games, so let's see where this one falls in that lot. So in Dice Throne, each player is going to pick a character. So six characters come, a paladin, a monk, a shadow thief, a moon elf, a pyromancer, and a barbarian. When you take a character, you're going to get several things. You'll take this sheet here. This explains any special abilities that you have tokens that you can do to other people. It shows you your dice and the number of correlation that are on each side of the dice. You also will get a player board. So each player has a different board. Here's the barbarian player board. And then you're going to get a box. Now these actually store in the, the box this, and they come out. So you, it's, it's really easy to take things in and out. You get five dice that are numbered one through five but have matching symbols on the sides. You'll get combat point tracker. This is kind of like currency that you're going to use to play and buy cards. And you'll have a health tracker. You'll be starting at 50 health and fighting against another person. That's how you win. As well as a deck of cards that's customized to your character and a few tokens that may correspond to the special things that your character can do. So the game has different phases, and there's a main phase in which you'll be playing and buying cards, and there's a combat phase, and I want to talk about the combat phase first because everything else kind of affects that. This is where you attack the other player. So what you do in a combat phase is you'll roll your dice, and you're going to look at what you rolled. So I rolled two hearts, two swords, and a star here. And I'm going to be looking around the board to see what kind of attacks I can do. A small straight is a one, two, three, four, or I even have a small straight. That is a three, four, five, six. So that might be worth doing. That's nine damage. If I get two swords and two stars, I could do four undefendable damage. That might be worth it to do nine with a chance that they block it or do four. I can smack them with my swords, but nine damage is better than that. I could heal some damage if I roll some more. So I think for now, I think the best thing to do is to take the small straight. But if I didn't want the small straight, let's say I decided I want to do Rage, my ultimate ability down here. So I would re-roll all the dice. This is very similar to a popular game called Yahtzee. At this rate, I'm realizing, hey, I'm not going to get the, all the stars, so I'll re-roll these. I get four swords, so I decide to do this one six damage. Now when you attack somebody else, so let's say I'm attacking the Moon Elf here, everyone has a defensive roll. So hers is called Missed Me. It tells you how many dice she rolls. She rolls five dice. If I roll two feet, I prevent half damage. She did it. And then for every two bow and arrows, she does one damage back. Well, this would probably work better if I was actually rolling her dice. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. She was rolling the Shadow Thieves dice. Here we go. So she rolls. I still didn't get the two feet, but for every two bow and arrows, she does one damage back. So she would do two damage back to the barbarian. Let's say she's attacking the barbarian, same thing. So here I got two bone arrows. Ooh, that lunar eclipse. Well, she'll, we'll still try to go for the really big one. Lunar eclipse, that's probably not going to happen, but she has two feet and a bow, two bows. I just need one more foot. I didn't get it. So at this case, I got to try to figure out the best possible thing that I can get from here. A large straight or an eclipse, and that's how you're going to fight back and forth with each other. So you got to you get to roll, and you can re-roll twice. Now you're going to be doing damage to the other person, and first person to knock each other out. But the game has a lot of is going to really revolve around these cards. You're going to start with cards, and you're able to sell cards for a combat point. And cards are going to cost combat points to use, or sometimes they're free. If you look at the cards here, you'll see in the top corner how much it costs to play the card. And you'll see some of them are free and some of them cost two combat points. Some of them, when you play them, are going to take the place of other things on your board. So for example here, this one here is called Mighty Blow 2. You'll see I already have Mighty Blow here. A small straight does nine damage. 
Now it changes to a small straight does eight undefendable damage. Or maybe I can get crit bash two, uh, which changes this to do five. It stuns my opponent, then does five undefendable damage. Now it stuns and does seven undefe undefendable damage and gives me a crit smash. You can even upgrade your defensive ability. You'll notice here, when you he defends, he rolls three dice and he'll heal wounds for, every, for double the number of hearts he rolls. Now, he can do the same thing, but he rolls four dice, and if he rolls two hearts, he can also stop one of the status things that come in. And you can upgrade even to a third thing. So you can go from, for example, there's a smack or sturdy blow two, for example, here, which now does five, and then sturdy blow three. And you can go directly to sturdy blow three, but if you're going from sturdy blow two, you just pay the difference between them. So that's one thing that cards can do, but there are other cards that you simply play and they do different things, like this one you play when you roll the dice. A target player may re-roll one or more of their dice during a defensive roll. Here, remove a status effect from a target player. Here, this one's played during your main phase and flat concussion on the target opponent. Here you just draw two cards. And everyone has a very unique deck and plays very differently. And they also have different status effects. So for example, the Pyromancer has a chance to um, play this on someone else when that they have to cool down during their upkeep phase. They have to take that off. And she has a chance to burn. That's going to do two damage to the person every time. The Moon Elf can blind and tangle and target someone. Someone targeted it's going to take extra damage. The Shadow Thief has sneak attack and they can poison somebody. The Monk has a whole bunch of things, including a lot of Chi, where you can use them to decrease damage that you'll take. The Paladin has a whole pile of different things that he can do. Retribution, Blessings of Divinity. And so these special abilities are going to change how you play the game. Now, the game is basically built for one versus one, but you can play with multiple players, then there's just a special rule as when you attack who your target is going to be. But that's pretty much the game. The components for this game are top notch. The dice are really good quality. I don't know that, I mean, I know they need the numbers on there for things like small straights and stuff like that. Um, I almost wish that that didn't have to be the case because I would have just liked the symbols, but they're still really good. Both the dials are really nice. Um, the cards themselves, and the, the, the tokens are fine, here, just little tokens, but the cards themselves, uh, really nice, good quality cards. I love the artwork on them. I love how the, it's just very simple. I mean, I guess I wouldn't have minded maybe some artwork in the background here, but you're just, this is what the card does. You know where the card goes based on the color. I like that sort of thing. And then this case here, these are really nice. Uh, as you're putting the game away, each of the cases is going to fit in the box like this. So that's a nice thing. You know, you can put all six cases in there. And then when you're done, you put all the boards on top of that. It's really easy to pull in and out. The boards are really good. They're clear. It's easy to look around. Just a stellar, stellar component production. Well, as I said, it's just stunning. It looks great. And I mean, I know they got expansions on the way. Uh, when I was at one of the conventions, they were showing me the deluxe dice. And I was like, well, the deluxe dice look great, but these dice look really good. The whole thing's a nice package. I like that. I just open it up and go boom, boom. Grab my sheet, grab my board, ready to play. It is not hard to teach. In fact, I find it slightly amusing that on each of these characters, there is, you know, difficulties. Like the Barbarian is, or does it mention it on the board? It mentions it somewhere where there's a difficulty level of each of the players. It must be on the board itself. But there's like difficulty one, difficulty two. And the fact is, is they are all pretty easy to play. I'm not ever going to sit around and go, oh man, the reason I lost was because this one was so hard. I think it's here in the beginning. Yeah, complexity, I guess. Complexity of the Shadow Thief and Paladin are five. Complexity of Barbarians are one. Well, that's true to some degree, but they're all fun to play. And even with people who are new to board games, which I think this is kind of like an audience going for, this is not a difficult game to learn and teach. It's just push your luck. What are you going to roll? You're going to try to go, you got a combo. You can get some, you can hit me right now. Or are you going to try to go for a better combo, that ultimate combo? Those ultimate combos are really neat at the bottom. They give you an ability, and then they inflict, like, like um, let me see, the Moon Elf. Lunar Eclipse, gain evasive, then inflict blind, entangled, and target it on the other person, and then do 13 damage. That's really cool. I really like that. 
Um, you, you, uh, then you have your deck of cards, and each person's deck of cards is going to be very different. And then this is where I guess the complexity comes in, is with the different special abilities. We found ourselves saying, what exactly does Knockdown do again? What does Entangle do again? Well, Entangle, when you have that, you get one less roll attempt on your next phase. When you have Evasive, um, you can spend that token, and if you roll a die and it's a one or two, you don't take any damage. So you have to just remember those things, and that's fine. And that's probably that's the most complex part of the game. This is not some deep strategic tactical game. It really isn't. If you come and say, I'm going to whoop you because I'm so much better than you, I doubt that because I just might get some great dice rolls. But I don't mind that because the dice rolls feel fun, they feel exciting, and they give you real choices. You roll, like you saw my first roll, I got a small string. I probably should have kept that. Had it been in real life, though, I might not have. I might have said, can I get something better than this? Yeah, and then when's the best time to play your cards? What should you spend your combat points on? Should you upgrade your abilities? Or do you, should you save those combat points for cards you can play in battle or do things to the other player? Um, a game lasts about 30 minutes for two players. It says 30 to 40 minutes here. Um, I haven't actually played with more than two players. And I know you can. You can target other people. But I just enjoyed this back and forth, one versus one. It, that's that's where the game shines. And I feel like if I added other people, be like, oh, now i got to see who I'm targeting each time. No, 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 no. I just want to be me versus you. And honestly, if you play that way, you literally could play six players at the same time. Just each person plays against the person across from them. Because you don't need anything else. Everything you need is right here. I wouldn't be surprised if they at some point sell boxes that are just one or two characters. Because that's all you need. Well, you need the board, I guess. Um, and But that's all you need. So literally, this is three games here in the same box. So it's neat. High quality components, it's simple. It's simpler than, let's say, Summoner Wars or Mage Wars or things like that. But that's fine. Sometimes I just want to sit there and roll dice and get those combos. That excitement there and the playing the cards and just the good quality. This is a very crowded genre for sure. You know, fantasy character versus fantasy character. There's a lot of that. But this does a good job of it. Looks great. And I think we'll see it with some legs in this coming year. So I like it. That is Dice Throne. Thanks, Tara. Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Oh.